Hashtag, where is my name? Afghan women campaign to reveal their name. In Afghanistan, family members often force women to keep their name a secret from people outside of the family, even doctors. Using a woman's name in public is frowned upon and can be considered an insult. Many Afghan men are reluctant to say the names of their sisters, wives, or mothers in public. Women are generally only referred to as the mother, the daughter, the sister of the eldest man in their family, and Afghan law dictates that only the father's name should be recorded on a birth certificate. But some Afghan women are now campaigning to use their names freely with the slogan, where is my name? The campaign appears to have taken a big step in the past few weeks. A source close to the Afghan president, uh, Ashraf Ghani, said he had instructed the Afghan Central Civil Registration Authority to look into the possibility of amending the country's Population Registration Act to allow women to say their names on their children's ID cards and birth certificates. I didn't even know this. Did you guys know this? Um, I only found out about it recently because of this campaign. Shopam, did you know this? Same as Susanna, I found it out recently. Where does this even come from, not using people, women's names? What the hell? That's um, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad, and I think it speaks to the level in which women are held in shame or disdain or a false sense of protection for them. Hmm. Like you can't even say their name for revealing them, but it just erases women as beings to such a deep extent that they cannot be on their own children's birth certificates acknowledged as their parent. Um, the, the, this news article that we are referencing starts out with this story. A woman from Western Afghanistan, we will call her Rabia, was suffering a severe fever, so she went to see a doctor. The doctor's diagnosis was COVID-19. When she returned home, still stuffed, suffering from pain and fever, and gave her prescription to her husband to buy the medicine for her. When her husband saw her name on the prescription, he beat her for revealing it to a strange man, in quotes. Um, her story is not unique. Um, yeah, so even your doctor who's prescribing you medicine is not supposed to know your name. This woman had COVID and she was beaten for having her name on a prescription to get medication. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what the source of this is, though. Like, I don't understand where this came from. I mean, we do. We don't want to like. We want to make sure we're not blaming religion for something that we know we're not sure is because of religion. Um, you know, things could be indirectly tied to religion, even if religion doesn't have any, um, you know, any teachings on it. Like, there's nothing in Islam that says that you can't use women's names. I mean, even if you read hadith, um, women's names are mentioned in the hadith. But the but again indirectly maybe when you create an environment where misogyny is so common and women um, women's identity is so insignificant maybe you get results like this indirectly. But Shabham, Shabham. So yeah, I was I was about to say that like it it is prob it is not in Islam okay, but it could be because like Islam um, imposes this objectification of women and it went to such an extreme case in, in this instance that this instance that the entire culture developed with it and it just went to like women as being objectified so hard that they can not even reveal their name because they are not even being treated as beings in this instance. It's so true. It's really sad. Um, it says the problem starts early when a girl is born. It takes a long time for her to be given a name. That's not too unusual. There's a lot of cultures where they wait to give the child a name. Um, then when a woman is married, her name does not appear on her wedding invitations. When she is ill, her name does not appear on a prescription. And when she dies, her name does not appear on her death certificate or even her headstone. So this is like true erasure of women. Like personally, ooh, I don't know if I want to get into all this. I have a lot of feelings about feminism in America. And this is where I decide to focus my energy. I'll just say that. Um, 
credit for starting this campaign goes to a woman named Leila Osami. So look up her work. She's really amazing. Okay, I need to comment on that where you decide to focus your attention. Um, I have to always clarify that it's okay if you want to focus on women rights in United States or Canada or Western European countries. It's okay if you want to do that. Like if some people say like, oh no, this is women issues is more important in the Middle East or in Africa or in the Far East or whatever. Um, and that's where you should your focus be. I'm like, no, you focus, you know, you don't have to focus on the biggest problem to make a difference. You could, you could focus on a problem that you're more, more passionate about or something that you know more about or something that you think you could help more or whatever, right? As long as you don't dismiss the other problems. Like, so for example, you keep, somebody might want to focus on Christianity and you're like, why are you focusing on Christianity? Islam is worse. You're like, well, I want to focus on Christianity or I want to focus on Hinduism. Um, that's fine. Or somebody's like, oh, I want to do all religions at the same time. Or somebody says, no, I want to focus on Islam. All of them is fine. As long as if you're attacking, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with somebody going and attacking Christianity as long as they're not saying, oh, but Islam is okay, right? If th if they do that, then I'm like, okay, I'm coming after you now. Um, so if somebody says, like, you know what, I'm going to focus on women rights issues in the United States, and if I don't think it's fair, if, and, and I didn't, I'm not saying you're saying that, Susanna, but I don't think it's fair for other people to say, why are you focusing on women rights uh, issues in the United States? We have women rights issues in, in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the situation is way, way worse. I like, no, it's fine. You can focus on as long as you don't say, oh no, women there have it fine. As long as you don't say the the, the women rights issues there are not a big deal, and people shouldn't focus on that. If you do that, then I'm coming after you. But if you're saying, yeah, that's also bad, and I'm glad somebody's dealing with it, but I'm focusing on this, then you're okay. Shabam. Yeah, and that's why I was speaking for myself, but I yeah. agree with everything you said. Uh, I wanted to add that, like, when people say that, yeah, women in the United States and Canada and Europe, they're fine, you should focus on the Middle East and other backward countries, like, I think that's harmful, to be honest, because it uh, it makes the activism in your, in your own country stagnant. So while you're focusing on other countries, they might progress, but the progress in your own country will either get very, very slow or get stagnant. And I'm saying this because I have seen this in India, because the majority of people are like, whenever you criticize anything in India, they will be like, but go look at Pakistan, but go look at Iran, but go look at North Korea. And I'm like, yeah, I agree that those are hellos, but it doesn't make India any better. Like. India is still not like really good a, a place or something. So we need to focus on the issues in this country as well as, and some people might, like it's on you. Like if you are not being opposed, you are not opposing any kind of activism, like whether it be your own country or some other country, then it's fine. But if you're opposing it, it becomes a problem. I, I found- don't know if it's a yeah, go ahead. Um, just to kind of answer your question in terms of like where this comes from, the article goes into it a little bit further. It just says, um, according to the Afghan sociologist Ali Kaveh, Afghanistan remains a patriarchal society in which male honor forces women not only to keep their bodies hidden, but also to hide their names. Um, in Afghan society, the best women are those who are not seen and heard. As the saying goes, apparently there's this saying, the sun and the moon haven't seen her says Mr. Kaveh. Okay, I do want to mention to Faroz in the live chat that other people in the live chat are also confused by your profile picture. People think that you're Muslim. Um, so, you, and, I'm, and I'm highlighting your comments and it's going to confuse people as well because a lot of people recognize that this is an Islamic icon. Um, so you, can you please change that? <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, can be Muslim. I didn't say he can't, but he's I not. know. <laughs> okay. But okay. okay but, I, I wanted, not a very relevant point, Susanna, but I'm okay. not sure if 
Okay, I'm not sure if he's being sarcastic there. Like Eddie Capitano on Facebook, uh, he said backward countries, how racist. I don't think uh, so. being socially backward, I, if I call them socially backward, it's racist at all because I call India socially backward than uh, European countries and North American countries. It's not racist. It's how the society is there. So, I mean, people can still be progressive from there, but the society in large is backward. Hmm. By the way, Marcus Sherlock is defending my position in the live chat, which is very rare, to be honest. Um, okay, let's go to... Maybe it's because we defended him so much in the in that last week, and now he feels bad to... Um, he I mean, you were, you were exposing, me, exposing him. Isn't he on suspension? Should you be highlighting his comment? Oh, shit. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I can't. All right, all right. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has what's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like bell, <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that. They want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think is no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about <laughs> that anymore. But we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos.